value this with Dr. Lori. What a coincidence. Dr. Lori is right here. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> why do you have, good to see you, why do you have gloves on? I have gloves on because the oils on your hands can be transferred to objects, attract dirt, and deteriorate your objects and devalue them. So I evaluate about 20,000 objects a year at public events all over the country, as well as when I'm in an environment like this appraising pieces. So I'm going to touch something so I protect the pieces with gloves. Anybody who isn't wearing gloves isn't an expert, period. Oh gosh, you know you can't. Years in major museums. The standard issue, like on a construction site, they give you a hard hat. In a museum, they give you gloves. Okay, well, the way I've been dropping things around here, they should give me a hard hat. <laughs> so, should somebody, when they go to, we're at one of a kind consignment gallery, great place in Princeton. Should should the, the person who's here buying wear gloves at a place? Well, no, I mean, I'm handling a lot of okay. objects. Okay. And even in your house, you don't have to worry, oh, I can't touch my Hemel figurines without gloves because Dr. Lori's wearing gloves. Right. I do it because with the with the multitude of objects that I handle, right. out of respect for the objects, you've got to make sure condition. Condition is king. You've got to make sure it's in good shape. So that's and what the gloves are for. speaking of that, condition being king, we're talking yeah. prints. What? Well, we're talking about damage. You know, I always say don't buy damage, period. So don't buy damage. Well, how do you recognize damage? And, you know, a lot of times damage doesn't look bad and it isn't really hurting anything. And it makes it look old. It makes it look old. Shabby you know? chic. Shabby chic. So, you know, but I want to make sure that what you're doing is you're thinking about how to maintain those antiques so they hold or increase their value over time. Right? Because okay. we're all about value this with Dr. Lori, right? Yes. Okay. okay. This Here's looks, an example. This looks dark and old, and to me, that makes it more valuable. Compared to this, which doesn't look dark and old. Right. Okay? And the reason why I'm, I'm saying that is this particular piece is older than this particular piece. So, you know, and, and 19th century piece versus a 20th century piece. So from the 1800s versus the 1900s. Okay, simple. Here's the problem. This is an acidic mat. We don't have acid-free or museum archival mats until about the 1980s. Mm. So everything that's, that's basically matted prior to that is acidic. Which means it's going to eat through something. Which means acid is present. And when it is actually framed up under glass, this will become a nice dark color. And what happens as a result is all of the paper eats uh, in that acid takes in that acid. Oh boy. Now, it can be restored, but you have to think about how much expense is there going to be in restoring it and how much expense is the piece worth. So you think about what's the value versus, of course, what is the conservation method. So this is acid, an acid mat. All you have to do, the frame is fine, the, the glass is fine, the backboard's fine. What you have to do is you have to just replace the mat. Now, you could choose to have a paper conservator conserve the print, but it's really not going to increase value all that much. So, it looks good, but you want to have an archival mat, an acid-free, buffered, 100% cotton rag mat on all of your prints if you want to hold them. If you don't care about their value down the line, Fine, leave it the way it is. Okay, this is worth what? What would it cost to get it on acid free? Oh, an acid free mat like this is probably fifty dollars. Oh, okay. For the mat. Okay. That doesn't mean make a whole. That doesn't mean you have to change the frame. You don't have to change the frame. You just have to basically replace the mat. Okay. Now, when you get in there, you're going to see a line, a pretty significant line, all the way around where the old mat was. So make sure when they cut your new mat, they cut it to that line. Okay. So is this more valuable than this? I think the. Prices. Age is not a value indicator. So this one's older. Is it necessarily more valuable? No. In this particular case, this particular piece is worth less than this particular piece. Because this is a Marc Chagall, very famous work. This piece is a print after a famous artist named Fragonard, who was an artist who painted wi around the time of King Louis XV in France. But this is not by Fragonard. This is by one of his followers. So the difference here is you've got a major artist doing his own work and you've got somebody copying the work. Remember, age is relative, right? So you want to think about things like, you know, my mother's 93, she thinks I'm young, my 20-year-old niece doesn't. Age is relative, right? But you also want to think about, I have junk in my house, my grandmother had junk in her house. Sometimes it's older junk. So thinking of that, you want to think about pieces that are in good condition and keeping them in good condition. Acid-free mats will help keep them in good condition. Some objects, you say, you know what? That mat doesn't bother me. It's not going to impact value all that much. Leave well enough alone. Don't, it's your decision. Don't buy damage unless you really love the piece. That's right. Okay, Dr. Lori, thank you so much for letting us know about, about these damage and damage and that sort of thing. And, you know, sometimes that's just part of the history of the piece. It's the way I like to look at when I break stuff. <laughs> okay, Dr. Lori, thank you so much. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.